Hard to not talk about Apple as we kick off this discussion of the pre-Powell market scan. How are we how are we preparing for FOMC? So that enormous candle is a reaction to the buy the rumor. I shouldn't say buy the rumor. It's really buy in preparation for the event. This event could have been anything. It just happened to be WWDC, but events have a way, whether it's a split, whether it's earnings, whether it's in this case, uh, the product announcements, or I should say the software update announcements. Um, we saw the profit taking, right? Folks taking money off the table on the Monday that the event started. Uh, Tim Cook comes out and talks about Apple intelligence. And even more than that, Apple sunk into the daily price movement range Monday. And this is such a great example today of not just taking back the sell-off from yesterday, resuming the uptrend, and then reminding us that Momo, momentum, begets more Momo, right? Momo feeds the Momo. And was anything mentioned at that event that good? It doesn't matter. This isn't an uptrend. And if traders continue to buy, buying does attract more buyers, right? If I think about what 80 plus percent of market participants do, they love to buy into highs because it's confirmation in, to them that we're going to continue. The minority of traders look to buy the dip or as I like to consider it, something on sale, right? And that's what happened here. This is the sale, right? And, and this is your typical retail type participation. And so with that in mind, Apple's moving higher. And if we think about the weighting of Apple in the XLK, we think about the weighting of Apple in the NASDAQ, the Qs, whether that be NQ or QQQ, we think about it in the S&P. Uh, Apple has the ability to move the indices because of its weighting. And then when you think about a move that at this point is over, what's the range today? 12 and a half, 12 and a half point range. That type of range, which is way beyond the, the typical 68% price movement, that is a huge amount of bullish influence. So one stock can make a huge difference to an index. That's the high concentration world we live in. Now, Apple's not the only thing that's been resilient in front of Powell. The other one is NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA, much like Apple, has significant weighting. Uh, it's weighted heavily in the NASDAQ. It's weighted heavily in the uh, SMH, which I would love to put on the list for a post Powell. So SMH would be on the list for a pullback buy. Taiwan Semiconductor would be a list on a pullback buy. NVIDIA and even Qualcomm, which is not in a trend, but still very viable. Now you might say, Rob, NVIDIA doesn't look all that strong. Agreed, it's not having an Apple moment. Not much is. But it's interesting to note that when we look at the post, we look at the post split NVIDIA, and this is where maybe some traders were expecting too much weakness. So let's talk about how much by a percentage from the highs we would look at. And this is going to be the same way we would look at in terms of pullback when Chipotle splits. So a percentage from the high, we're looking at about five to 10%, a minimum of 5%. And usually about a max of 10. And this one ended up pulling back right around 7% in terms of the post split pullback. In fact, some of that pullback started on Friday, a little bit more on Monday, and then it's been pretty resilient uh, ever since. NVIDIA is in an overall uptrend. So just because there was a split, you know, if I think NVIDIA is going to crumble beyond, say, that 5 to 10%, I'm missing the point because the post split profit taking very expected, but NVIDIA is in an uptrend. It has a narrative for the uptrend that's far more than that 10 for one split. The chips are in demand. This was in an uptrend before. Uh, let's take a look at what this chart looked like. It was in an uptrend on and off throughout the year, a little sideways chop action, but there's no reason not to presume that after that five to 10%, and by the way, the DPMR is gonna look wonky because we just had to refresh them to update for the split. They'll start to even out and not look like shark teeth um, soon enough. So it, it is a wonky look right now, and that's just a post-split look. But let's look at it through the lens of SMH and, and Taiwan Semi, because this would be another place that I'm looking to be bullish if Powell does 
uh, not talk as dovishly. And what does Powell have to do? He has to make sure that November and December rate cut expectations remain high, if not higher, after the press conference. He doesn't have to do anything to September, right? September is 50-50. It's a coin flip. And look, equities have been rallying without cuts, right? But they are rallying in expectation of them. So if you might say, well, Rog, we don't need cuts. Well, that's not exactly true. Because since late last year, cuts have been on the table. So the expectation of something, much like the way Apple moved, the expectation of WWDC, the way NVIDIA moved, the expectation of that split, this is the same thing. So whether or not it happens, the move between now and that final decision to cut or not to cut, this is going to continue to be pretty strong. So SMH would be a great place to look for a pullback buy, as long as, for whatever reason, Powell doesn't put his foot in his mouth and somehow reduce expectations for... November or December, there is no cut plan for June. There is no cut plan for July. Clearly the FOMC want to enjoy their summer vacation. Uh, they take October off. They take August basically off. And so if we don't get the cut in September, that puts the one or two cuts in November and December meetings. But in the meantime, in anticipation of, we still have movement higher. All right, you know what I realized? Yeah, so I do want to mention this because I realized that I do not have the updated stock pack running on NVIDIA. The DPMRs actually look a lot better than this. And I want to mention this in the free video because just in case those of you that have the daily price movement range subscription, which you can check out at simplertrading.com, yeah, they look a lot better than this. I realized that my setup here doesn't have the fresh daily price movement ranges that came out yesterday. Okay. So then that brings us to uh, a look at the sectors. Let's jump on over here. So in front of Powell, so far, month to date, you can see here semiconductors at the top of the list, XLK, XLC, XLV. Keep an eye on this one. That's basically been a lily conversation, which if it were to pull back, I would absolutely expect a resumption of the trend. And then staples. Staples have been a quirky, defensive and, and as have utilities, by the way. So keep an eye on staples. That might be a really good place to, to I don't want to use the word diversify, but not just, you know, go all in on tech. Uh, this would be a great place to look. This could be a look at not just XLP. Uh, check the open interest. It can sometimes be thin. But I would also take a look at uh, the uptrends that are in the consumer staple sector. And that would actually start with Costco. Costco, Walmart, we have an open Walmart swing trade in the sector secrets mastery, Philip Morris and Altria. Those are the four names I'd keep an eye on. And I would keep an eye on those four stocks for pullback buys. All right, in the premium video, I'll do a deep dive on the setups, but this is a look at the watch list going into tomorrow's event. 2 p.m. we get the rate statement, that's East Coast time. And at 2.30, we get the presser. I'll see you in the next update. Hey traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.